Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are God all by yourself, O Father. Holy are you, Lord, and all creation calls you God. I <laughs> calls you God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Take full control, all of you and none of us. Hallelujah. We submit and surrender everything that we are to you, Holy Spirit. We submit every element and aspect, every fiber of our being, everything that is needed, everything that is you are God from beginning to end and there is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Holy One of Israel, we bless your name. We praise your name. We honor you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals us. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides for us. You are awesome in this place. You are our provider our healer, our deliverer, our present help in times of trouble. You are the one we look to and you are radiant and your, our faces will never be covered with shame. We look to the hills from whence cometh our help and our help cometh from you, O God. The transfigured, transformed, the transitional, wonderful, awesome, oh, indescribable God. We bless you, Lord. The songwriter says, I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail in all our days. Hallelujah, you have held us in your hands. From the moment that we wake up, until we lay our head, we will sing of your goodness, O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All our lives you have been faithful. All our lives you have been so, so good. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel. You are God, you are God, you are God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is his name. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. But teach us how to love you more. Teach us how to understand. Teach us how to learn. Teach us how to draw closer to you. Teach us, oh God, how to be like Moses. To come delicately and humbly uh, and passionately into your presence teach us oh god how to walk holy and upright before you teach us oh god how to how to understand your character and nature teach us oh god how to be more like you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we need you lord we need for your character and nature to be seen in us oh holy one of israel every person that is gathered here this morning i pray by the mighty name of the lord jesus christ i ask you holy spirit to minister into our spirits minister into our souls minister into our bodies minister healing and deliverance minister power love and a sound mind minister to us, O Lord, Holy Spirit, that we might truly be anointed sons that you can trust. Minister into us by your Holy Spirit, by your, your Holy Spirit. Minister the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Minister the spirit of counsel and might. Minister the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Minister to us, Holy Spirit, that we might reflect and impart the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit all of our days and in all of our ways. May we walk holy and upright before you, Holy Spirit. May we walk in the fullness of your glory. May we walk as you unveil our story. May we we walk not on our own in our own direction but led by you for your word says lord god almighty those who are led by your spirit the holy spirit of god are the sons of god i pray that in this season oh god almighty every single member of this fourth watch hour our sons our sons walking after your spirit walking according to your leading and your will and your purpose this is our desire this is our desire to come up higher to come up higher and to be on fire 
for you by your Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we glorify you, we glorify you, we magnify you, O precious Lord. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for keeping us through the night and keeping us safe till morning light. We praise and honor and adore you. And we declare that it is well, it is well, it is well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to another day in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is faithful. And this is the fourth watch hour, the fourth watch platform. The fourth watch is the hour that is famous in the Bible when Jesus visited his disciples, when they were in trouble, uh, when they had a need, when he wanted to reveal himself to them again as the sovereign Lord. He walked on the water to meet them in the fourth watch hour fourth watch hour is a special time it's a time of sacrifice it's a time of miracles it's a time hallelujah for those who are blazing those who are desirous to have more of God more with him those who desire to be in the cleft of the rock I believe that the fourth watch hour is the cleft of the rock moment for those who don't know what the cleft of the rock moment is it's the time when Moses said to Lord to, to God show me your glory and the Lord so hide him in the cleft of the rock because no one could see no man could see his face his is the fullness of his Shekinah glory and live and so the Lord God Almighty being so accommodating wanted still to show Moses something awesome and powerful and wonderful of himself and so he hid him in the cleft of the rock and covered his face with his hand and allowed Moses to see the backside of his glory hallelujah and Moses had a wonderful story from that encounter Lord we want we want to experience such a glory we want to experience such a glory and so lord that's why we come into the fourth watch hour as the cleft of the rock to see the backside of your glory hallelujah so that like moses we too can have a story like jesus we too can walk in the fullness of the goodness of god hallelujah 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 so i say good morning to you this is truly the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Great and faithful is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One songwriter says, How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one. Forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. He says, I lead you. Won't you trust in me? How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one. Forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. He says, I lead you. Won't you trust in me? We trust in our God. So I just want to welcome each and every one of you, those who are on Facebook. Hallelujah. Special, special Facebook. Take a look. Hallelujah. You're not a crook and you're not only a cook. Hey, bless God. Right, Sister K? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those of you on Instagram, we love you like whoa. Hallelujah. We love you what we're telling you now. Hey, those on TikTok, take stock. Cause you're not lock nothing in the name of Jesus Christ and Arrows Internet Radio Pastors Campbell Hallelujah Noel and Juliet Campbell great pastors lover of the word lover of prayer oh my goodness what a people can pray Hallelujah 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 God is a good God and to all the Arrows Internet listeners today and all the time we bless God for you we bless God for you we bless God for you may health and strength prosperity and good success be the portion of all the arrows internet radio listeners they are now arrows on the fourth watch 
family hallelujah to all the leaders all the uh, persons who hold distinguished offices in the lord i pray god's blessings and favor upon you in this season leadership is not easy it is it is it is difficult by every stretch of the imagination and even more so in this season so whatever leadership position you hold whether in the family you are the parent you're the mother or the father hallelujah you are um, a boss at work uh, with a supervisor any level of leadership uh, whether you're a pastor evangelist it matters not every single level of leadership all the way up to the very prime minister hallelujah it is a difficult difficult job and so i bless and let me tell you every single person i say this um, as, as often as i can every single human being that is under the sound of my voice and who even isn't you are a leader you're a leader and the more you lead is the more people will follow you have to lead for someone to follow you know i was talking to 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 my wife uh yesterday uh as we we hear things and we learn things and we try to grow through things uh because as we learn things it is predominantly to teach sometimes i teach things that i learned too early because it has not even set into my system yet but um as i as i as i get things yes that's right um dimple you are a leader and we have to say it i am a leader i am a leader it is well this is my season i prophesy that this is my season to flourish this is my season to increase to expand to enlarge this is my season for blessings hallelujah a leader leads the way for others to follow and so even if you are only leading and I don't mean this in any simplistic or disparaging way. Even if you are only leading your own family, your children, your son or your daughter, or both, hallelujah, you are a leader and you must lead. You must lead by being positive. You must lead by being an encourager. Come on. That's why this week we're doing encouragement. Be encouraged. If you are encouraged, you're a leader. And if you are an encourager, you are a leader. Come on. So you have to be encouraged to be a leader because a leader in the midst of battle, in the midst of the army looking like they're being defeated, the leader still has to encourage the people. The leader still has to lead. Hallelujah. Good morning, Mrs. McLean. God bless you, Sister Delia. Praise God. God, thank God for you. Hallelujah. You still have to lead. You still have to be encouraged. And so a parent, my wife has to lead her, 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 her two children. Come on. When, 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 when Ben is here, Masha has to, has to be the leader. And sometimes when she's teaching and taking him through the paces and, and he throws a tantrum and carry on, uh, she can't just, leading is not just about disciplining. Leading is about encouraging. Leading is about setting the right example. Leading is about saying the right things and doing the right things. And so some of you might say, um, and some of us might say, because for years and years and years, even in my adult stage, even while I was a manager, I never saw myself as a leader because a manager is one that gets things done with and through other people that's the textbook uh, uh the textbook definition of a manager one that gets things done with and through other people that's the manager but the leader is a visionary a leader sets example a leader um, goes the path and allows others to follow a leader is never looking for who he can get things done through a leader is one who is looking to get things done by people's admiration of who he is and what he desires and so there are so many persons around from from political sphere to um to, to to managerial or corporate sphere to 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 church sphere that desires for persons to follow them or to to honor them or to walk with them or to do what they say uh, by just what they say and that for me i am saying to you those of you who come on to follow me and to join me please don't try to force your children to do what you say please that's not good leadership that's not good leadership if you are going to tell your children you must honor me because i am your parent you must honor me because the bible says you must honor me 
if that's the basis on which you are saying that your children should honor you, your staff at work should obey you, your 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 congregants should uh, love and revere you, your 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 citizens of your country should uh, ob obey what you say and honor you, uh, then you are in trouble. You are in trouble because firstly, the office that you are in, the office of mother, the office of father, is a solid office that commands respect in every way, shape and form. Come on, the office of a human being commands respect already as a leader, but you can only gain that respect. You, the person in that office, can only gain that respect by how you lead, what you say, how you what you do, what decisions you make, how consistent you are, how caring and compassionate you are, how much you do what Jesus said, that on these two laws lie all the laws on the prophet, uh, and how much you, you love the Lord God Almighty with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and how much you love your neighbor as yourself. I have, as, as one of my oversight and my leader and my, uh, you could call him spiritual father, one of the greatest men I have ever met when it comes to love, Reverend Dr. Merrick Almiller. I love that man. I honor that man. But I only love and honor him because of how he loves and honors other people, not because he says so, not because the Bible says so. I love and honor him because he loves and honors people. Amen? So so, so the examples that he sets, so no matter how, if he stops loving and honoring people, come on, I'm just giving an example here, right? This is not about Dr. Miller and it's not about me. I'm giving you an example. The moment he stops being God's representative, in my life, the moment he stops being an example, a leader, stops going and being and doing. And remember, this is just an example. Amen? Don't get caught up into who I'm using as the example. But I'm saying to you, the moment, all right, let's use the prime minister. The moment the prime minister ceases to become the prime minister, where only the office is deserving of the respect, but not the man then I'm not going to say anything disparaging about him. I'm not going to curse him or, 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 or sin against God by, 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 by not obeying the rules and the laws of the country. But he, in effect, cannot lead me. He cannot lead me. I will have to find someone else to motivate and inspire me and get me to the next level because he's going in a different direction from where my life needs to go. And the same thing goes for every single facet and element of leadership. And so if you're a parent and you're supposed to be leading your children and you are a smoker, drinker, a harlot, a, 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 an adulterer, a fornicator, um, you're doing, and I'm just naming some stuff, not that those are worse than a gossiper or a liar or, um, you know, anything like that. One who doesn't honor their word, these kinds of things, wanting children to say, do as I say, not as I do. Then I'm telling you, as soon as they can, those children will leave you and you might be sick and they don't even come back to say, hello, are you hearing me, somebody? It is how we lead by example, encouragement, motivation, discipline, consistency. We must be consistent in the things that we say and do as a leader in order for persons to be admiring of what we, what, who we are and what we have inspired them to do. And then, then and only then will genuine honor comes. If your children only honors you because you are the parent and they, 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 you pay the bills. Come on now. And if you disagree, you can say you disagree. But if your parent, if you honor your parent because they pay the bills, if you honor your parent because you, they, you live under their roof, but you can't wait as soon as you get to 18, 19 and can work, or as soon as you finish university, you can't wait to get out of the house, then... Your, parent really, your parents really have not led you. They really have not. Now, I agree, there are some persons who don't know how to lead, but they are thrusted in leadership positions. And so they will make some mistakes because they didn't know how to lead. They, they got involved in things that they shouldn't have got involved in. You had children when you were not mature enough and all these kinds of things. And so you made some mistakes. But even as a leader, you will make mistakes. You will make mistakes as a leader, but you are still a leader.
the fact that you make mistakes and the fact that you don't know how to lead properly doesn't change the fact that you're a leader. And that's one of the big mistakes that we make. And so I say, be encouraged, be encouraged. Find out how to lead. Come on, find out what you need to, 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 to do to lead. And to lead, you must first be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so if, if there are great leaders that are not led by the Spirit, but there are no not, um, not great leaders that are led by the Spirit. All right, let me say that again in a different way. Every person led by the Spirit completely are great leaders. But there are some great leaders that are not led by the Spirit. Okay? So there are some people who are great leaders because they were born to be led by the Spirit with a gift of leadership, but they have not yet come into the fullness of submission to the Holy Spirit. And so they are leading from their gift. Amen? They're leading from their gift. Come on, that's right. So they're leading from this gift that God has given them, but they're not leading in the way of righteousness, holiness, and truth because they're not led by the Spirit. And so some of these great leaders that you see, um, uh, what's his name? Hitler um, was obviously a great leader. And I don't mean to be controversial or political. I'm just saying to you, anyone who can rally, Jim Jones, all these wicked men that did some wicked and evil things to people, Tarek um, Koresh in, in Waco, Texas. These people are, they draw people, they lead people, though they lead them down the wrong path. So they had a gift to lead. Come on, don't miss by the example. Listen to the principle. They draw people to them and they lead charismatically and, and intelligently, and uh, uh, but by another spirit. Come on, hallelujah. So we as people of God have to seek Firstly, to know that from you were born, you were born to be a leader. And so if you lead by the Spirit, set yes, hallelujah. So you can lead from your gift or you can lead from the, the Holy Spirit. If you lead from the Holy Spirit, he will even increase your gift and make you better. Miles Monroe was an awesome leader who led by the Spirit of God. And there, 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 there are many others. Amen? What a gift of leadership. What a gift of leadership. That's it. Come on. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So Miles Monroe was born with a gift of leadership. He connected that leadership to, to, to the Holy Spirit. And he accepted the Holy Spirit's leadership. And his, his leadership became excellent. So come on, it's not too late. Sister K, it's not too late. You might think that because you have some gray hair now, that leadership is not no longer on your on your sphere of um, on your spectrum or in in, in in is something that you can do. All my children are grown up and they are their own leaders now. No, woman of God, you can still lead. And I'm talking to I'm using Sister K, but I'm talking to each and every one of us. Come on, Keisha. V. Scott, you are all leaders in your own right. Come on, Jojo. Come on, hear me carefully. You are all leaders in your own right and you got to lead. Because leadership is like the talent that was given out in the Bible. The gift of the talent is spoke about God, uh, the, the manager, the boss gave one talent to, to, to one person, two to another and five to another. Each person got their own leadership gifting, their own talent that they had to expand, that they had to strategize around, that they had to work on to make it better. So just be encouraged this morning. Each of us have been given something that we need to work on, something that we need to go back to the Holy Spirit and says, what do I do with this? The one that got one, he didn't know what to do. All he saw was the negatives that said to him, I am not good enough. I cannot turn this one into anything. I am, I am afraid of what I can and cannot do. And so he, 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 he just hid it. He buried it. And he was chastised big time. How many of us that are hearing my voice this morning have buried our leadership skills, have buried our leadership gift? have buried our ability to even follow the Holy Spirit in the way that we should go. Are we producing, are we a great leader to our children, to our community, and even to our nation, if that's our call? Have we been a great leader? And if we have not, can we identify that we have not been and make a change? 
Come on, Quenda, when you look back at your life, Quenda, have you been an excellent example of leadership? Come on, Melody. Hallelujah. You went to good school, Melody. You got you saw leadership at its best at the school you went to, the high school you went to. Come on. Norma, Roche, have you been an excellent leader? We have to ask ourselves these questions because it makes no sense for me to be saying, oh, be encouraged in this season and tell you some nice things and, and, and you feel good, but you're not making any change. You're not making any change. Encouragement and leadership means making a change. It means being honest enough to identify where I have gone wrong, where I have buried the gift of leadership that God has given me uh, because I didn't want to mess it up, because I didn't want anybody to think that I'm trying to lead, I'm trying to be who I'm not. That's not it. That's not it. That's being like the man who got the one and made excuses about why he didn't um, benefit from it. The, 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 the master said, couldn't you even at least put it in the bank so that you can get interest on it? The, it might have been a very small interest, but something would have gone on it. Couldn't you at least ask God, how do I lead my children well? And yes, your children have grown up now. Yes, your children have grown up now and they're, and, and, and they're probably out of the house. But are they still your children? Yes. Will they have children or have they already have, um, do they already have children? Yes. Well, guess what? You can still lead. You can lead the grandchildren. You can still be an example of how to be a great parent to your grown-up children. You have still, as long as you're alive, God says to tell you this morning, I prophetically speak into your situation. God says to tell you this morning that you are still a leader. Once you're alive, you can still lead. You can still be an example. Come on, let me take you into the scripture because we do nothing else except what God says in this devotional hour. Naomi had lost her sons and lost her husband. She felt like she was alone. Who could she lead at this point she had no support system no 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 foundation everything was taken away she could have had a pity party and just gone away and said you know what i'm just gonna lay down and die like the samaritan woman who said oh i only have a little oil and a little corn a, a little meal and I'm gonna just make a cake, and then my 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 son and I are gonna my sons and I are gonna just eat, and then we're gonna die because that's it. We have nothing left. We have a hey, we are out of everything. But I'm saying to you, once God is in the vessel, there is hope. There is an opportunity. Once there is a leadership anointing upon us, even when it looks like we are overrun by the enemy, even when it looks like there is no hope, Paul was in a sewer tied up and he was still saying in everything, give thanks. Oh, that was leadership at its finest. When you are going down with the ship, you still must say there is hope. There is a chance that something will come over the horizon at the last minute until you take your last breath and cannot say anything or do anything again you must still lead come on i'm talking to myself and i'm just hoping that you will hear as well and be encouraged amen and so naomi having lost everything did not feel like she was a leader she didn't feel like she could lead come on somebody hear me this morning Though you have gone to that place where you are older now, your children are gone. Hallelujah. Your children are gone. Everything seems like it is, it is all gone. Your finances is down low. Hallelujah. It, 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 your health is in problems. You're having um, periodic chest pains and, and all kinds of breath, short breathing and all kinds of different elements and ailments. And you feel like, you, you, what can I do? I am, I, am, I am a peace of person right now. I'm just hanging on until the glory comes. I'm just waiting until my change comes. I'm waiting on the Lord. As long as we have breath in our bodies, people of God, there's an opportunity to lead. I don't know if Naomi had any ailment. I just know that she knew where she wanted to go. She wanted to go back to her homeland. And once you are going somewhere, you can lead somebody somewhere. Oh, come on. Somebody needs to 
Just, 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 just hear that. Hear that in your spirit. Once you are going somewhere, come on, Quenda. Where are you going, Quenda? Quenda, you're on your way to heaven. You're on your way to heaven. Come on, Lynette. You're on your way to heaven. Donna, are you on your way to heaven? Then if you're on your way to heaven, you're going somewhere. And if you're going somewhere, you can lead someone somewhere. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Get encouraged. Get encouraged. If you're going somewhere, you can lead somewhere. If you're going somewhere, you're a leader. As long as you're going somewhere, you're a leader. The only person who is not a leader or who have abdicated their responsibility as a leader is someone who is just sitting there. Someone who is like the one with the one talent, not doing anything. But as long as you're going somewhere, if you're going to work, you can lead someone in the path of being a diligent worker. If you're, if you're going somewhere trying to get yourself educated, you can lead others into the importance of education. Or oh, somebody be encouraged this morning because leadership is in you. It is in you. You just got to identify it. God is leading you, therefore you're going somewhere. And if you're going somewhere, lead somebody going somewhere with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And leadership is not just in telling people what to do, but leading them in where to go and how to do it. Come on. Leadership is not just telling someone what to do. It's leading them in the way they should go and how they should do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Too many leaders in today's day are really and truly lazy. They want you to do everything. We, yeah, <laughs> we leaders want you guys to do everything. And so that's why so many of the young people today have become better leaders. I'm, I'm not sure it's not, it doesn't seem to be freezing from my side, guys. So I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I'm still actively engaged. I know when 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 my um, screen freezes, I can see that I'm I'm not interacting. So maybe it's from your side that it is freezing. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I don't want you to miss the importance and the value of leadership. Remember, in the simplistic terms, once you are going somewhere, you're a leader. Once you're going somewhere, you have a vision. Oh, I would like to own a house. I would like to get married. I would like to have two children. I would like my children to be doctors and lawyers. I would like, I would like, I would like anything you would like. I would like to be healthy. You can lead people on a mission to be healthy. Because if you're going somewhere where it concerns health, what you eat, how you, what time you sleep, come on, what you put into your body, whether drink or food. And as you do that, you are leading, you are an example to others that they too, okay, hallelujah, bless God. You are leading others in the path that they should go. And so the bottom line of my encouragement to each of us this morning is one, you better believe that you're a leader. Be encouraged, you are a leader. Okay, so let me just put that out there. But let me let me let me make sure I reiterate that I'm not just saying this like how some persons will encourage you and say, Oh, do you know that you can hear God clearly and you can you can be taken up to heaven and, and, and God can come for you and take you on journeys and all these things? That's not what I'm talking about because that's up to God Himself, and He doesn't do that for everybody. That's not what makes you a leader. An encounter with God, a prophetic um, a prophetic mantle, a, an apostolic mantle, a, a, a pastoral mantle, mantle, a teacher's mantle or an evangelistic mantle does not make you the only leader. Every single person is a leader, even when you are on, you are being led. Okay, so that's what I want to encourage us this morning. Just simply to understand that you might not be like Pastor Juliet and, and, and Noel Campbell who have a radio station and, and is on their way to great things. But you can be a leader on the radio station. You can control a program. Come on. You can be the leader from the perspective uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Uh, Pastor Marsha and I are going to be on on Arrows Internet Radio um, hosting a segment from 9.30 to 10.30. And we're going to just, and, and that puts us, 
from 9 to 10.30, sorry. And that, that makes us a leader. So while Pastors Campbell are leaders of the station, we are leaders of a segment. Come on, somebody got to hear me. Somebody need to hear me. And so I'm saying, I am a leader. Come on, touch yourself and say, I am a leader. I am, a I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. I'm, leading I'm leading people somewhere. I am a strong leader. I am a strong leader. A powerful leader. A powerful leader. A mighty leader. A mighty leader. An anointed leader. An anointed leader. And I'm led. And I'm led by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I am successful. Therefore, I am successful. I am prosperous. I am prosperous. And those who I lead, and those who I lead, who are successful. Are successful and prosperous, and prosperous in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen hallelujah 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 come on guys that's us we have to believe that we are leaders and begin to lead properly in our area and so what's the first criteria of becoming that awesome leader that we need to become the first criteria is submission to the ultimate leader submission to the ultimate leader it is difficult to submit to an earthly leader if you cannot submit to the heavenly leader now some persons will say the other way around how could you submit to god as leader if you can't submit to a leader in the natural let me tell you why because god is perfect in all his ways god is perfect in all his ways leaders in the natural often are not often are not there are some wonderful leaders you know i know some leaders that wow i'm telling you I, I i could name some names but i won't i have had the honor of being led by some people male and females that have been exemplary some of them are still my very good friends today from the work work the days of work when they used to lead hallelujah um, lead me and and so uh, people are exemplary leaders but they also are flawed they make mistakes sometimes they're proud sometimes they're fearful come on sometimes they don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior sometimes they don't have the Holy Spirit leading them in all of all their ways and so they will make mistakes but Jesus cannot make any mistake the Holy Spirit cannot make any mistake and so we must learn as we're trying as we're learning to submit to humans we must learn to submit to he who is perfect first because in the leadership of the perfect holy spirit he will teach us how to deal with the imperfect leadership of man oh hallelujah mm. as we learn how to become great leaders part of that mission is allowing the holy spirit to teach us how to still honor and be led by an imperfect leader amen and so if you look at um, Ruth Ruth had to have a heart after God in order to be led by an imperfect Naomi two people two women because remember Naomi had two daughters Naomi's two daughters, both of their their um two their, their sons, both of their 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 um their her sons died, and so she's now stuck with two daughter-in-laws. One daughter-in-law had an encounter with God through the leadership of Naomi, while while her family was there, and she saw God in Naomi and admired that God, or she saw leadership by the Spirit of God and she admired it. And wanted to emulate it the other saw a woman maybe in her flaws and faults and all these kinds of things right so she had two daughter-in-laws and one saw the God in her and the other uh, liked her but only as a human come on so when the time came and they were both going with her one was following Naomi Come on, somebody. One was following Naomi as a natural leader, and the other was following Naomi as a spiritual leader. The one that got the option to go follow someone else, 
Come on, the one that got the option to go vote for someone else because someone else seemed more attractive, gave them something else, or offered something else, she, 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 she easily turned and went to follow someone else. But the one that was following the God in, in Naomi, which is Ruth, she could not be discouraged. She could not be dissuaded. I'm saying to you, if you are a God-led leader, if you're a Holy Ghost-led leader, no one will be swayed. No one will be discouraged. No one can steal away. That's why Jesus said, none that I have received. Oh, somebody should get in spirit this morning. None that I have received have I lost. Because the leadership gifting of God, the leadership anointing of Jesus Christ of Nazareth was so powerful that even when some people say, what you are saying, and how you are leading come on 70 disciples i'm jumping all over but it's still on the platform and the foundation of, of, of the bible uh, uh, jesus was uh, the, the leader of our leaders one of the goodness and one of the blessings and one of the the, the 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 anointing of a great leader is not to be so tied to people that you can't lead as the holy spirit leads you or oh, hear me somebody hear me somebody be encouraged on this Tuesday morning. One of the benefits of a great leader is that you are not tied to those who you lead. Because if you are tied to those who you lead, they will lead you. Come on. If you are so into your children, that's why some people's children become idols to them. Because instead of leading their children, their children begins to lead them. The society that is going around now, once upon a time, maybe 20 years ago, I used to say, boy, the American society is in trouble because they, they, you can't discipline your children. You can't do this. You can't do that. If you talk hard to your child to try and get them to do the right thing or to lead them the right way, they call. 911 and next thing either you're arrested or your child is taken away well I'm saying to you it's no longer America it's everywhere 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 and so what is happening now is that we're not leading our families anymore our families are leading us and we're so tied to them we're so tied to them they are the ones leading we're not being a good example because we have not asked God, how can I be a great leader to the ones you have given me to lead? We have not asked that question. And so he who is the leader of all leaders have not been able to pour into us so that we can lead our children and others. And so Jesus, as he was leading, come on, he called some people, he called 12 and then he appointed and anointed 70 more. And so he had this big crew of intimate persons, deacons and elders and, 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 and disciples around him. A nice big posse. And can you imagine everywhere he was going and leading these people as he was going on these various journeys and missions and, 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 and sojourns. He was going about and he was doing good and he had this massive crew. Can you imagine how good it feels if some people only have a congregation of 30 and they feel like they're on top of the world? Imagine Jesus with 70 close-knit, what meant that was 70? 70 plus 12, that is 82, with 82 champion men around him like, hmm, and women. Yeah, backing off people, making a way, a path for him. He would have felt like MC Hammer, can't touch this, can't touch this. Yeah. And then, and then there were 20 other, or sometimes 30 or thousand people following him to listen. He had the biggest congregation there is. And at the time, he could have felt like, yeah, I'm the man, I'm the real big man. But guess what? The people were connected to him. He wasn't connected to the people. Now, don't get it, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Please, don't get it twisted. I don't mean that he was not connected to their infirmity, that he was not touched by, by what was going on with them, because we see that clear in Scripture. Even when the guys were walking with him for three days and he was ministering to them, and he recognized, oh, it's been three days, these guys must be hungry. And the people said, all right, send them away. His, his close compadre says, send them away, let them go get food. And he said, no, you can't do that. It's too far. They, 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 they will have issues. You give them something to eat. So he was in touch with them. He was connected to them because a leader must be connected to his people 
in the spirit but you can't be connected to them in the natural you can't be connected to them emotionally so if you're connected emotionally to your children you will not be able to lead them by spirit if you're connected to your workers at work or your co-workers at work in the natural you will not be able to lead them by spirit come on because when they say or do something uh, that connects to you emotionally you'll be torn between how you are going to lead them or how you can you discipline them so if your child always think that no matter what they do if they throw a tantrum in the supermarket lay down in the aisles and roll on the ground and carry on and carry on you're gonna be like oh please junior please please junior stop this you're embarrassing me junior stop junior stop stop junior is never gonna stop leading you because leadership is like an aphrodisiac once you get that that rush of leadership you're gonna want to lead and so if you don't know how to lead your child your child is gonna lead you if you don't know how to lead your congregation your congregation is gonna lead you if you don't know how to lead your family as a, as a husband or as a wife your family is gonna lead you and so the 70 when they heard Jesus declare a leadership position he says unless you eat my body and drink my blood you cannot be a part of me. And some of them, 70 of them said, this is a hard thing. We can't deal with this. And they said, you know what? We're taking away ourselves. In Jamaican parlance, yo, we're taking away ourselves. This now make it. The little man are coming like him have some cannibalistic tendency about eating body and drinking blood. Okay, so in proper standard English now, the, 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 the guys heard Jesus make this comment and they were, they, were, they were befuddled. They were beside themselves. They were like, where is he leading us? This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. But their responsibility as individual leaders, come on, hear me clearly. As an individual leader, your job is to demonstrate that leadership gifting by asking additional questions. You lead the way you would want to be led. And so if you feel like your leader is leading you somewhere where you shouldn't go, ask a question. Leader, um, I hear you say that we should eat your body and drink your blood. Could you explain what that means, please? Because we know that um, you are a good person. Your character and your resume of, of being a great leader is, is, is impeccable. Uh, but we don't understand this because it sounds cannibalistic. It sounds unreal. It sounds like something that we would not be able to do. So explain what you mean by that. And as they ask that question in humility, they would have gotten an understanding and would not have been had, had to, um, to be led in the wrong direction. But they didn't. So what am I saying? As a leader, even when you are being led, part of your leadership responsibility is to ask for clarity. I love when, 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 I, when we have devotions and I say something and someone either disagrees or don't understand or have a different perspective and they call me up and say, Pastor Wade, I heard you said something this morning and so and so and so. And how, explain to me how you're there. And by the time we finish, man, I'm like, yo, thank you for calling. That was so cool. Nice. Or they get an understanding and say, wow, great. Hallelujah. That's what a great leader does. You either ask someone or you ask God. But you don't just go off thinking that you have it all locked. You go off. So they heard something. They heard Jesus say something. They didn't understand, but their leadership's gifting didn't chip in. And so they said, you know what? We're gone. We're out of here. And it was their loss. But Jesus was not tied to them emotionally. Oh, can I preach this morning? Jesus was not tied to those guys emotionally. Not even the ones that stayed. And so the Bible tells you that Jesus looked at them. And he watched them go. His congregation shrunk by 70. And maybe more because that 70 were the inner circle people. The big crew. And they must have had influence on some other people as well. So when they were leaving, they may have, may have. It's not in the scriptures. It's not clearly stated. So please don't, don't, don't say, I say I'm not adding or subtracting. I'm just using natural nature and people. If, if, if 70 left, maybe, just maybe, others who know them 
and, and were influenced by them were led away as well. But since the Bible didn't say it, we're going to just leave it to the 70. But I'm saying to you guys, watch this. The 70 left. And because Jesus knew where he, Jesus, was going, and only who wanted to be led by him, wanted to go where he was going, could be led by him. And so the 70 that wanted to go in a different direction, despite the fact that it was a misunderstanding, it was a demonstration that their own leadership skills had not been developed and so they had to go back to the drawing board. So really, they didn't leave Jesus. They went back to a drawing board, to baby stage, where they had to be trained how to come and follow a great leader. But watch this. What was profound in, 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 in this leadership um, encouragement that I'm giving you this morning is that Jesus, he didn't run after them and say, please, please, you can't leave. No, I'm, 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 I'm not giving you your release. I am not giving you no release. Your membership is here and you're staying here. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? You are not going anywhere. How dare you? You cannot disrespect your leadership. What I say is what goes. You must obey me. I say eat my body and drink my blood and that's final. You cannot question that. You have signed on to follow me and you must follow me no matter what. Whether you understand it, whether you like it or not. But Jesus was not like that. Because you see the many examples of when the, the, the disciples didn't understand some things, but they had a gifting of leadership. And so because they wanted to learn, they would go with him. Remember when he, when he gave the parable, the various parables, the, um, the disciples would go in the quiet time and say, so, so Lord, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by the sower? Um, what do you mean by, 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 by um, some seeds fell on thorn, among thorns, some fell on stony ground, some fell on hard ground, some fell on, on good soil? What do you mean by that? And when Jesus explained to them, voila, they become greater leaders because now they understood parable and the, and the, and the, and the breakdown of the parables. Amen? So they became greater leaders by just asking, what do you mean? Are you hearing me, somebody? In humility, we ask questions and we gain answers. And as we gain answers, we grow. As we know more, we grow more. Amen? The disciples that left didn't seek answers. They were not humble. They maybe were fearful that where Jesus was leading them was not a good place. They may have been proud. How could he say this to us? How dare you? You don't know, say so we're a big man. We are adults. You can't tell us that. We have sense. Pride. So hear what happened. You see this? We, we, we're not doing this anymore. You don't have anything that you can give to us. And Jesus allowed them. It is only in this dispensation of church where you are a slave, bought and paid for. You're not being led by love, by knowledge, by wisdom, by understanding, by the Spirit of God in the person. You're being led by the rules of church, the rules of the organization, the rules of the country. That's, why you're, that's how you're being led. And so whatever we do, we do. In Canada just recently, um, the Prime Minister who was voted into office before he became the President of Canada, he was just a normal man. A normal, normal man with no power, no influence, nothing. And then he became the president, of the, the prime minister of Canada. And all of a sudden, he's making rules against God. Against God. And he's expecting that all of Canada will line up behind him and go against God. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Prime Minister Trudeau, you are warned. Be careful not to kick against the prick. I warn you from a simple, humble space and place in Jamaica. As a leader, if you want to continue in the office of honor that you have been given, stop fighting against God. Stop. Please, sir. Please. Please. You are humbly warned. These things that you're jumping up and carrying on and going on. You can, you can support the LGBTQ2 and 3 and 4 and 6 and 8 community if you want. That's your right as a leader. No one wants to take that right from you. 
you make that decision based on the office that you're in. But to say you're defending the rights of one group and you're taking away the rights of another means that you do not have the full exposure of the value of a leader. Because a leader does not just lead one set of people. And so as Jesus was the epitome, the example of all examples of a great leader, when one group, the bigger part of his congregation, wanted to leave, he didn't panic and say, okay, I'm going to run after the 70 because the 12 is a smaller number. If I get 70 to come back, even if I lose 12, that's okay because that's a small number. My congregation needs to stay big. So I'm going to run after the 70 and beg them to come back. But if you beg some people to honor you and to serve you because you gave up your leadership strength, then they're not serving you. They're just there waiting on the time for mutiny. They're not serving you. They're there waiting on the time for mutiny because everyone wants to follow a strong, directed leader who is going somewhere by the Holy Spirit. Amen? I hope you're getting this and I hope you're being encouraged. And so, as a leader, be a leader of example, not a leader of emotion. Be a leader that is going somewhere that others can go and benefit from. Jesus was on his way to the cross. He led the people to the cross, but not to be on the cross, to see that as a leader, he was willing to pay the ultimate price for those who he led. Oh my God. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus was going somewhere. He was going to the cross. Because after the cross, he became the boss. <laughs> Praise God. So he led all of his disciples and all of who followed him to the cross and showed them what a great leader would do for those who he has been given to lead. He paid the ultimate price so that we could be nice. Mm. Not just to eat chicken and rice. <laughs> Praise God. No, it's a serious thing. So when the 70 left, he turned to the 12 and he said, will you also leave too? Will you also go? They stayed not because they were afraid, but because they knew who this leader was. People must stay with you because they know who you are. Your children must honor you and respect you because they know who you are. A solid woman of God, non-compromising but loving. Hallelujah. Not lukewarm on some situations and hot on others. You know, you have some bosses in the workplace that no matter what some staff members do, they get away with it. And then others get drawn up, get memos written to them, warnings on their file. Despite the fact that they're a good worker, but because the boss doesn't like them, good that's not a good leader. If you're like that, stop, I beg of you, please. That's not a good leader. A good leader can have his Peter, James and John or her Peter, James and John. That's fine. No issue. You can have that. Your inner circle, your close confidence. But everyone that you lead must be treated fairly. All your children, the one that is bright getting A's and the one that is getting C's. No bias. You must treat all fairly. Yes, the one that is getting A's will get an extra hug and an extra kiss and maybe an extra sweetie or an extra um, spoon of rice or an extra piece of meat as a reward for excellence. Come on. But the, the one that is getting C's must not get sardine or mackerel and the one that is getting A's get chicken. That's wrong. Wrong. And so if you're a boss, if you're a parent, come on. If you're a manager, a supervisor, whatever you are, if you're a pastor, a deacon, an usher, any position that you hold anywhere from just normal human all the way up to a recognized office, as a leader, you must be fair, you must be just, you must not be emotionally connected to anyone or anything. 
or you're going to have issues. Lead by the Spirit. Lead by the Spirit. I close this time of encouragement by saying to you, even in your house, you're married and you want your husband or you want your wife to do stuff, lead by example. Do it. Do it. You do it. Just do it. And sometimes you're doing it and, 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 and you hear a voice in your head saying, what? What? Why do I have to do this again? Why do I always have to do this? Why can't somebody else do this in the house? Why can't somebody else do this? Why is it always me? Keep doing it. Keep doing it and watch. Because sometimes God is teaching you how to be the sacrificial leader. How to be the leader like Jesus. Who when it came time for him not to have anywhere to live, he could do that. And when he had somewhere to live, he could lead someone there. He could lead someone to the cross knowing that it was going to be painful and difficult. And then he could take the pain and experience the difficulty for us all. Who are you willing to pay the price for? Because the price of leadership is not that you go before the people necessarily. It's that your spirit is before them, but your physical man is behind them pushing them in the way that they should go. Because sometimes you have to push people into their destiny. Amen. Praise God. Are you encouraged? I hope so. Bless the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for your people this morning. I thank you that leaders have arisen in a greater way and with a greater measure this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that leaders are now popping up in Australia, leaders in America, leaders in the Caribbean, all of the Caribbean nations, leaders in Jamaica, brand new leaders of families, leaders of businesses, leaders of church, leaders of of government i thank you lord that there is no sector no sphere of society that leaders are not popping up right now in the name of jesus i thank you that leaders are in the cubicles and leaders are in the big offices leaders are outside sweeping up and leaders are inside in the air condition i thank you god almighty for the anointing of leadership that is upon your people i thank you that there are leaders who are in the hospital and leaders oh god who are sick at home leaders who are working and leaders who are unemployed i thank you that no one will think that their circumstances prevents them from being a leader in the name of Jesus. I cut loose. I cut loose every person that is connected to a non-leadership anointing, a non-leadership uh, uh, rope in the name of Jesus Christ. Every umbilical cord that is connected to your people this morning that tells them that they are in part to them, that they are not great leaders, that they are not called to be a leader. I cut it off with the sword of the Spirit and I release release your people to run and never be weary as a leader, to walk and never faint as a leader, to tread upon serpents and scorpions as a leader, to know the fullness of the leadership manual that is the Holy Spirit. Spirit, God, that every move they make will be led by your spirit. Everything they think will be led by your spirit, the great leader of all leaders. I thank you, God, that right now you're downloading into each and every one of us a leadership anointing like none other in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Father that we are brilliant, we are blessed and highly favored, we are the head and not the tail, that's what the leader is the leader is the head and not the tail, we are above and not beneath, but Lord we are not above in the natural sense of being above, but we are above reproach, we are above being categorized and classified as leaders only in an office, but not leader in actual action oh Father God, may we never be classified again as one who only has an office but no authority no power and no example may we be a pleasing sight to you as leaders that you have called us to be in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen 
Praise God. Praise God. You have received an uncommon leadership anointing this morning. Be encouraged. Go out there and lead, man. Go out there and lead. Ask God, how do I lead my family as of today, Lord? How do I lead my co-workers as of today? You might not be the supervisor, the manager, or the boss, but you can still be the leader. Oh, somebody got to hear me. You might not be the pastor in your church, but you can still be a leader in your church. Come on, glory to God. You might not be a leader in your family sphere, your household, where there are many persons. There might be leaders ahead of you, but you can still be a leader. Amen. Lead by the Spirit of God. Ask the Lord this morning. Lord, make me a leader in my house, a leader in my community, a leader in my church, a leader in my country. I want to lead, Lord, because this world needs great leaders and we all were born to be great leaders. And so if there isn't a great leader in your house, that's because you have not stepped up. If there isn't a great leader in your office, that's because you have not stepped up. If there isn't a great leader in your church, you're complaining, boy, my pastor can't lead, my pastor, my pastor, my pastor. Uh, look at yourself first. Maybe because you have not stepped up as a leader. Amen? Step up as a leader. Because a leader helps even the very leaders that are in the office that are not going right. The leader who steps up is the leader who prays that leader through so that God can use you to help that leader in the office to become a great leader. Amen. That's leadership. Be encouraged by God's leadership. Be encouraged that you are God's leader in the earth in this time. Hallelujah. Go be a champion leader. Go be a champion leader. Be encouraged. You are a leader. You are great. And God who leads us is greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're at that time where we need to get into some word uh, to, to seal the encouragement. Come on. Hallelujah. The word that we get into is not to teach you word, but to make word work for you. Amen. And so that's why um, even though it might seem like we don't get a lot of word, it's not a Bible study, it's a devotion. And so we encourage, we pray, and then we use word to encapsulate, to seal it. The word is like the wrapping paper. The word is around it, but when the word is, is opened, come on, when the gift of, the, of, 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 of our lives is opened and the word is revealed, we are revealed. When we are revealed, we, 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 we come forth strong and powerful and mighty because word wraps us. Amen. Praise God. And so we were in um, uh, yesterday, Colossians 2, Colossians 2, and we looked at some things that Paul was saying to the, 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 the church at Colossae or the Colossian church. And, and, and uh, verse 2, he says, uh, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart. So we looked at that, encouraged in heart and united in love. And so we looked extensively at heart encouragement, which is one of the things I did for you this morning, and united in love. Every leader must love those who he leads or she leads, every leader. If you don't love those who you lead, then you need to go back to the drawing board and learn how to love those who you lead because Jesus led, remember I said, led us to the cross by his love and then took the punishment that we deserved. All of us deserve to be on the cross, but he went on the cross for us because of his love amen hallelujah so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding and so we must understand the importance of love the importance of leadership in order to truly dive into it and do it even when it's hard even when it looks like we're not the people who are leading are ungrateful and they're not following us the way that they should Jesus had the same problem with you and I at different points in time. You know, many times Jesus hold him head and say, Ruan, what you doing? What are you doing, boy? Seriously? Seriously, Ruan? Is that how you, see, you follow me? Is that the example I set for you, Ruan? Really? Goodness, man. But here I am today. There are times when he still says that, but not as often as he used to. Come on. And so... I'm learning how to lead by following the great leader. Amen? Hallelujah. So you get a complete understanding of what Jesus wants from us. And so we follow him as a result of that understanding. Amen? In order that they may know the mystery of God, 
when you get an understanding of God, as you begin to follow him, you see the mystery. The disciples, as they walked with him, the 70 that left, didn't see as many things that could have caused them to grow and to be demonstrative of who he is is and was and will always be because they were not in his presence so as they follow him they will see the mysteries of god as we follow the leader the leadership of god we will see the mysteries some things that the people who used to lead us before couldn't do or didn't do when we are led by the spirit of god we will do those things and exceed the expectations of those who follow us and even those who have gone the path before us and so that's what the mysteries uh, of Christ will produce. Verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. As we follow the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge is poured upon us. As you, as, you, as you walk with someone who is leading, as, as, as Ruth followed Naomi, the temperament, the character and nature of Naomi fell upon Ruth. And so Ruth became an awesome wife and leader. Awesome wife and leader because she followed an awesome wife and leader in Naomi. Come on. And so as you come into, into, into following the Holy Spirit, committing to being led by the Holy Spirit, one of the things that you get is the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. Praise God. Would you like great wisdom and knowledge? Come on. Follow the Holy Ghost and be a leader as you go. And as others follow you and you follow the Spirit. Paul said it best. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Hey. Woo. Hey. Confirmation from the Holy Spirit is in the place. Hallelujah. And verse 4 says, I tell you this so that, you, so that no one may deceive you. Come on. As a leader, you must be beyond deception. The, 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 the 70, I said it before, tried to deceive Jesus by leaving. So many times people are deceived by wanting to force people to stay in their crew, wanting them to, you, you, you want to keep people under your tutelage because you want everybody to say, wow, what a great leader she is. Look how many people she leads. You, you are not a great leader by how many people you lead. You're a great leader by how many people are willing to follow you no matter what. Or oh, even the Pharisees followed Jesus when they didn't like him. Or oh, somebody got to hear me. They didn't have to like him to know he was a great leader. They followed him trying to find a chink in his armor, trying to find a way to tear him down. And because he was such a great leader, they couldn't. And they walked with him and learned from him and didn't even realize they were doing it. You must not force people to follow you. They must follow you because they love what you are and where you are going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he says that you will not be deceived by fine sounding arguments when you are following a great leader, when a great leader speaks into your life, pours into you. Come on. One of the greatest encouragements that Pastor Marsha and I ever get is when champion Christians that have been saved long before us, long, long before us, sometimes twice, three times as long as us, call us and say, man, I'm telling you, sometimes with, 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 with a, a, a great heart, they said, guys, we have been walking this walk for a long time, led by many great men and women. But it is since we have become a part of this Fort Watch family that we have learned and grown so much. And we have to stay humble and just be, just be, be, be tender in our hearts and say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are mindful of us. Thank you, Lord, that you are mindful of us. And so it's not about how long you've been walking the journey or who you've walked with or how many people you've walked alongside. It's about are you walking? Are you being led by one who is being led by God? Amen? Hallelujah. And so you won't get distracted by, by, by nice sounding arguments. Verse 5 says, For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. A leader is always present with those who he leads in and by the spirit. And so when you are leading, my, 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 my son must not behave, my daughter must not behave different in my presence from outside of my presence. 
your children, your co-workers. You should not have your 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 your, your team, your 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 team, your work team. Slack off and not doing any work until you come through the door. Like when I was in school, our principal was such an awesome, imposing figure. And when he would start to walk down the corridor, people would scatter, run to their class, go do what they're supposed to. And that I am learning now, today, as the revelation of God comes, that that was not the best form of leadership. It was leadership by fear. The children are supposed to be in their class just because they want to make sure that they follow the example of the leader. Your children are supposed to do right out of your presence because of how you have led them and taught them. Amen. And so that's what Paul is saying. Though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight and delight to see how orderly you are now. You are and how firm your faith in Christ is. And so though he was not there to teach them and to hold them accountable and to say, what are you doing? Stop fornicating. Stop gossiping. Stop committing adultery. Stop, 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 stop. He didn't have to be there physically for them to recognize that the leadership that he has provided has been good enough for them to stay firm in their faith in Jesus. Wow. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your leadership gifting and your leadership uh, 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 power and success is not in how many people you lead, but how many people become leaders, great leaders, because of you. Amen? It's not how many you lead, but how many become great leaders as a result of your leadership. So don't look for the masses. If the masses come, praise God. But make sure that your job, your thing is not boasting. Oh, I have a congregation of 18,000 people. I have 50 staff under me, 120 staff under me. And the moment you're not at work, nothing gets done. No leader, when you get old and retire, is there to come up and take your place. No one in your, depart your various departments can do anything unless you are there to show them how to do it. You're not a good leader. Let me just tell you the truth. In love, that's not good leadership. Your children must be able to function effectively out of your presence as they function in your presence. Your co-workers, your congregation must be able to function you know, I, I close this morning's devotion by just saying to you, um, we, we, we know of churches and even one particular church, Pastor Masha talks about it all the time when she used to, she used to go there, that when, if the congregation gets word, gets wind, come on, that the pastor was not going to be there one Sunday, that he had to travel to preach somewhere else, or he had to be out of, of, um, of church for two weeks, almost nobody would be at church. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Almost no one would be at church. And some people say, but it's because them love them pastor. They love and adore their pastor. No, he is a poor, she is a poor leader. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I, oof, please, don't miss it. Stay on point. I'm not dissing the, the, the leader or the pastor. They just do what they, what they know. And I'm just learning it now. So I could easily have been that. Um, thing there. So I'm, I'm not even pointing any finger and saying, oh, Rowan, no, no, Rowan, no, no, nothing except what the Holy Spirit leads. So I have to make that point so that you don't miss what I'm trying to say. If a leader, if people does not come to the place where the leader has established because the leader is not there, then that means they're tied to the leader and not to his leadership or her leadership. Because her leadership is supposed to create other leaders underneath him or her that have the same spirit, that carry the same kind of anointing. Because the anointing is for everyone. The office is for one. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing is for everyone. But the office is for one. So there will always be one in the office as the main leader. But all are supposed to have the same anointing or the same type of anointing that people are drawn to, that they can be led. 
So if you're a pastor, if you don't want to go to church when your pastor is not there, you need to have a conversation with your pastor. Pastor, something is wrong. You need to go back into fasting and prayer that the character and nature of Jesus can be so in you that when you ascend into a higher position, when you ascend into heaven, should you die before Jesus comes, that like Peter and Paul and James and John and Philip and Stephen, come on, others can easily attract a crowd in the same way and lead them in the same way that you did because of the teaching and the example that you demonstrated. So Antipat, hallelujah. The people that you have under you, make sure they are as good or better than you so that when you are not there, when you retire and go and kick up your foot, money can still be made so that you can continue to be rich and even richer. Hey, praise God. Hallelujah. I hope that you were encouraged this morning. I hope that you were encouraged by the Holy Spirit. I hope that as a leader, you are now encouraged to go forth, to be and to do for your good pleasure. Come on, lead in your own right. Lead yourself. Lead any individual that is in your space. Just lead, man. Practice to lead. Lead yourself. Lead, 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 lead until God gives you people to lead. If you have no one to lead, lead yourself the right way. Look at yourself in the mirror. So you have created two people and lead the one that is in the mirror in the right way. And when you have qualified by your sincerity, by your commitment, by your authenticity, and by learning how to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, then God will give you persons to lead. Laura, you are going, you're a leader of your family and you will be a leader in Colombia. Come on. Hallelujah. But you have to be committed to leading God's way. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your blessings and favor upon each and every one of us this morning. Thank you that you have made us champion leaders, even by our mindset. And it will be solidified by our actions as of today. Lord, minister to us in, a safe, in, a, in, in the same way every single day that we might remember. Hallelujah who you have called us to be today, great leaders who walk according to your will and purpose. May the anointing that was upon you, Lord Jesus Christ, to be the greatest leader in the history of man. Your word says that which we see you do, we will do and even greater works. May we lead like you led and may we even be greater in this time to lead even more than you led down the path of righteousness for your name's sake and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah. Guys, I, I, I apologize for uh, not having the Bible study last night. We, we, we As you know, we're in the throes of um, uh, hurrying to get the sanctuary ready. And um, ah, it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful, guys. When you see it, it you're just going to be beaming with leadership joy and confidence praise god and so last night we had to be there um, because the electricians were coming in to set up stuff and um, work was still going on and um and the the, the 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 guy to do the door for the entrance was supposed to come to take his final measurements so that he can start producing it and unfortunately satan crept in and caused something to happen to him um and and so he didn't make it and constantly that's why i'm asking you guys to constantly be having us in prayer because the devil is going about seeking who he may devour and so the guy up until early in the day had everything planned he went to play football and the holy spirit said something was wrong with him and when i called him and i said yo hallelujah what's going on you didn't you didn't get hurt playing football he said no i didn't get kicked down enough but i i i, I, I twist i ring my back and i said yep i know um, I didn't know how he was injured, but I knew Satan had done something. But um, we pray God, praise, pray, pray God for him. Um, I won't call his name because uh, he's a professional and it's a professional job that he was going to do. But we pray um, for that man of God. We call him the glass man for this morning, um, the doorman. Hallelujah. We pray God Almighty. The Lord knows who he is. And we just pray and ask God for speedy recovery, um, that there will be no damage to his muscles, tendons, um, or, or any other thing in his back, and that he will be well and be able to come to do his measurements today because this sanctuary needs to be open, will be open um, officially 
this month in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so we're declaring that the work will be done within this week. Well, where are we now? Tuesday. Within this week, next week, the latest, so that you, you, you can see what God has done by your giving and your blessing and your prayer to this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so we just ask God to touch and deliver his son from any plan, scheme, and trap of the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Okay, it's time for our special covenanted encounter with the Lord in the form of communion. So please get your communion ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Marlon says, I know that back pain well. <laughs> and yes, it's the lower back, yeah, from the football thing. Yes, and you play football. And so we just declare that the enemy lost again. That's right, Sister Pat. The enemy lose again. He will come this morning. He will take his measurement. And we will get our door in, in short order for what the enemy meant for evil. God has already seen and put in place better. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning for your goodness and mercy towards us. Thank you for your blessings upon us, O God. Thank you for revelation and the manifestation of that revelation to take us to a higher place without hesitation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now that they to our bodies will represent health and strength, prosperity and good success, will, prov will provide protection from every virus, every situation, every circumstance that the enemy would want to bring against us. May your body and your blood truly represent our defense and our attack weapons in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the apostles and he said, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat all of it in faith, in Jesus name. Mmm. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 And so... I hope that my apology for missing Bible study last night was accepted. Bless God. Hopefully next Monday we will be back on track. And um, hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to do Bible study both in person, come on, and online at the same time. In person in your sanctuary and online at the same time. Praise God. So we believe in God for that. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you and we love the whole of honor too. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, yeah, bless. Have a great day that the devil can't test. No matter how much mess, he will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God has made you the best. Amen. Praise God. Have a good one. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Marlon, you need to come see me today if you're not busy, okay? We got work for you to do, man. <laughs> bless you, bless you, bless you guys.